So you have a tenant rate and your love overlanding. You had plans to do it big on the trace and some super glamping. One idea, deep news and reviews, a podcast the first rate and here just for you. You don't have to think about it, join us and be about it. Something interesting we want to hear about it, come on let's talk about it. Welcome to Waypoint Overlands Random Waypoints Podcast. Sponsored by Midland. Communication for every adventure. The industry leader in radio communication technology and innovation for over 50 years. Sponsored by MyMedic. Sponsored by Tembo Tusk. Sponsored by Shower Pouch. Sponsored by DeMoss Collective. Mission built and made for mobility. Sponsored by BrewTrack. Sponsored by Hard Impact Designs. Always remember, the opinion you follow should be your own. Just consider the things stated here to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Hey, what's up, everybody? You know, more than anything, I'm a fanboy. And today, I have somebody that I've had on my list to be on this podcast since the very beginning. We've been discussing this for about two years, and I can finally happily say that I have Eva Rupert. You've probably seen her uh, on a game show that she's won twice that we'll talk about. Three times. Three times. Three times. <laughs> She's a a cyclist, and you've probably also seen her at Overland Expo, and we're going to cover all those. It's going to be all ever, all the time. And and by the way, to put the two of us next to each other, it's going off the rails, like it always does. It's already ridiculous. Yeah, it's off the rails. So you guys are used to that already, but it might go a little bit more off the rails than usual. So we're super excited to have you here. Awesome. Good. Well, thanks. This has been a long time coming. I think we've been talking about doing this since, like, I don't know, since, like, the third Overland Expo when everybody was like coming in horse-drawn carriages and buggies. <laughs> exactly. The internal combustion engine had not been invented yet. That's we're right. like, let's do a podcast. So I'm glad yeah. we're doing it. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. So let's, since we're at Overland Expo, let's talk about it. What, what's your what's your involvement here? How did it all start? Like, what's what's going on? So this year is cool. This is my 10-year Overland Expo anniversary. How cool nice. is that? that so is super cool. 10 years ago was the first time I came as an attendee. Did a couple years as an attendee back in the Mormon Lake days when Overland Expo was a fresh little baby event. Not very big. Not too many people. I mean, what was it back then? Maybe just a few thousand people? Probably, You know, yeah. maybe 5,000 people or something like that. And then... Yeah. When Overland Expo moved to Fort Tuthill, I started working with the company. And so it's been a good run, seven or eight years now, which is really, really cool. So 10 years under my belt. And right now I've done everything with the company. I used to do all the food and beverage stuff back in the day. And now I do all the motorcycle community stuff, which is my absolute favorite. And you're the voice of Overland Expo. Absolutely. Yeah, I do a ton of talking. I mean, you probably will get sick of my voice a little bit if you're here at Overland Expo, but you know, whatever. I think I sound good. Absolutely. (laughs) Oh, the greatest hype man for a raffle I've ever experienced. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gone are the days of the bingo hall, like number three, four, five. I swear it's like a full revival tent when I'm doing a raffle. It's like people are screaming and yelling, give me a koozie, like throwing their golden retrievers up in the front to get like a free leash. It's so much fun. Okay, so how did you get into the overland world and the travel adventure scene? Like, how did it all start? Well, we used to call it car camping. Yeah. <laughs> and yep. I've always been a traveler. I mean, as soon as I got my driver's license in Connecticut. Uh, Fellow Connecticutites here. Uh, I mean, I was mobbing around all over the place. I got my first motorcycle in my early 20s and just, it was a 1979 Honda CB750. I had no idea that it wasn't an adventure motorcycle because <laughs> I took that thing all over the place. I would put my stuff in my duffel bag and I would bungee cord it to the back seat of the bike and I would just go tooling around all over the place. I mean, I've ridden through all 48 continental United States, 
Canada, Mexico. I've done some international riding. I've just always loved to travel because I'm all about the people. I am totally a people person, 100%. And there's nothing that really puts you in touch with people, like being out of your element in an unusual location and really getting to know the people in that place. And on a motorcycle, you're exposed, right? A lot more than a vehicle. Absolutely, yep. You don't get to roll up your windows and put your air conditioning on or drive away real quick if something is sketchy. You are right out there in the open. You take your helmet off and you are eye level with all of the other people. And that's what I love about it. Like you can be a real honest version of yourself and mm. you know, see the world in a really special way. Okay, we're bouncing around. You live right now in one of the coolest places in America. Tell us about that. It is really cool. So I live in a little town called Bisbee, Arizona. I have a really awesome little vintage motel there called the John Quill Motel. It has seven rooms and then a big one acre backyard. So for all of our overland friends, you can come camp in the backyard. And for those of you who are looking for a hotel room, we've got seven of those as well. My boyfriend, Sterling Noreen, who's also a motorcyclist and a moto filmmaker, he and I own the place together and we love it. So that's home base for us right now. About five miles from the Mexico border. Take her up on that offer for sure, because yes. uh, I have. I have spent, uh, I don't know, a lot, a long time you in the backyard. Some good chunks of time <laughs> down there, yeah. Yep. Wait, Phil, have you been? No, you invited me, and I definitely plan on okay. coming. I've heard too much about it, too many good things All about it. All the good things. Yep, mm -hmm. it's a great town. The town itself is so much fun. It is like, I mean, whatever you like to do, you can do it in Bisbee. It is fun and funky and weird and artsy and creative and tourist oriented and outdoorsy. It's everything. Yeah. It's near the border. It's near the Mexican border. It's not like Arizona like I ever pictured it because mm -hmm. I had never been there until the first uh, event that we went to, we went to there, and I was like, "Wow, this is like up in the mountains." It's not. It's not. I was picturing like Tucson or Phoenix or something. Yep. Yep. Not we're, at all. We're we're higher elevation than Denver, so 5,300 oh, feet, wow. which is awesome. So it stays a little bit cooler in the summer, which we love, and then you know just great weather all year round. You looking at me? Oh, I was right? looking at you, Phil. I know you got a question. What's well, next? I, I have a lot of questions. Okay, um, Phil, take it away. I like to ask people who travel and, and adventure like you, every, everybody who comes on, I ask this, this question. If you were talking to a newbie and you only had maybe a, a minute or two to talk to them, what would you tell them that if they come to you and they say, uh, hey, I'm thinking about doing something similar to you, what should I do? I always encourage people to use what you've got. The best vehicle that you have right now is whatever's parked in your driveway, right? You don't need some fancy pants thing. You don't need a bunch of farkles and tchotchkes and <laughs> knickknacks all like over them. Farkles. farkles and tchotchkes <laughs> and knickknacks. You don't need any of that stuff. All you need is a set of wheels. It can be a Honda Civic. It can be a fully kitted Tacoma. It can be a motorcycle. Whatever you have, that is your first vehicle for adventure. So don't let not having the perfect truck stop you from getting out there and exploring. I agree. And I'm sure people are waiting to hear what is this three championships you won thing. <laughs> so explain that to the, to the viewers. Tell us about the TV stuff. Yeah, so a lot of people know me from the Discovery Channel Naked and Afraid show, which is really cool. I got involved with it long before it was ever on TV because um, I used to teach wilderness skills and primitive survival skills all over the country. It was just kind of my pickup work, taking kids and adults out into the backcountry, kind of teaching them about how it is to survive in the wilds. And so I had this resume built up from all the teaching that I used to do, and I was contacted by the Discovery Channel, and they're like, hey, we got this new show starting, it's a survival show, and I'm like, oh, cool, that sounds awesome, like Bear Grylls, and they're like, and there's a catch. <laughs> You're not gonna have any clothes on. I was like, what is this? That's Stop a big catch. right now. Stop it right now, and I'm thinking like, what am I what? gonna tell my grandma? <laughs> when I do this, but right. they were like, no, it's totally, it's discovery, it's really tasteful, the producer yeah. is just top-notch guy, and it ended up being a really cool experience, and I feel like I've been in a really lucky position, because I've been involved with the show since before it was ever on TV, so I had that opportunity to get, like, really dropped into this scenario that I had no concept of, I had no idea what was coming, mm -hmm. and it's just been really cool. So the first time I spent 21 days in Madagascar, wow. the second time I spent 40 days in Colombia, and the third 
time I spent two weeks in the Bahamas. So, so in hindsight, 2020, was the nudity the biggest challenge? No, hydration mm. is always mm. the biggest challenge. And I will say, you know, one of the other challenges, like when you're out there, the survival is so real, right? Nobody gives you a sandwich and a sleeping bag at the mm -hmm. end of the night. Right. But when you watch it on television, because it's a TV show, they're trying to yeah. they're trying yeah. to sell ad revenue. And so the version that you see on television is often quite different from the experience that I had out there. And mm -hmm. so I always try and remember because, you know, people in social media, they're mean sometimes. Right. And they talk all kinds of nasty yeah. smack. And you just are like, yeah. you really just have to remember that, like the experience that I had was awesome every single time. The people that I was out there with were awesome. Right? And like, yeah, there were good days. Yeah, there were bad days. But you know, like, have you ever tried missing breakfast and lunch and dinner? And dinner. For like Repeatedly. weeks and weeks and weeks. No, like everybody gets crabby because they got low blood sugar because they didn't have a second latte this morning, right? So you're just in this really extreme experience and it pushes you in yeah. so many ways. And like there's times when you're at your best and there's times when you're less than your best. Was it, was it like the hardest thing you ever did or was it, or, or was it something else that was harder? Ooh, that's a really good question. I don't think it's the hardest thing that I ever did. It was definitely challenging. It's definitely type two fun, you know? Not fun when you're doing it, fun in hindsight. Yeah, I'd do it again. It's like, um, what do they say, like childbirth? I yeah. don't have kids or anything, but it's like, <laughs> like, it's like, it sucks really bad yeah. when you're having the kid, but then you're like, ah, oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. I love the kid. I'm gonna do this awful, terrible experience again just for fun, right? So that's like naked and afraid. That's why I did it three times. I mean, I had to close my eyes for 50% of the one. I, I have the snake thing, that the, the one episode that right. it was, there was, it seemed like they, maybe they played it up that way but the whole thing was about snakes it seemed like yeah there was a lot of snake action that was madagascar yeah it was all about the snakes but we ended up eating those snakes it was really really good i mean and that kind of stuff just is like it's a lifesaver you know it's a game changer like you get yourself a big fat boa we um smoked the snakes so we made like snake jerky which you don't see in the tv show i'm like hello this is survival gold right right and right. you don't see it in the tv show but um we ate those snakes and that's really what saved our butts for that entire wow. experience which was really really cool so important question yeah how did it taste delicious <laughs> did it taste like chicken uh, kind of, <laughs> you know if chicken and fish had a baby yeah. it would be snake gotcha okay <laughs> what, what kind of food do you like uh, just in general just in general i mean i'm not really picky i like everything like i really like like i'll tell you what i'm gonna have for dinner tonight i'm gonna go find a place with a really nice steak and I want like a really crispy cold salad and a steak and like maybe like a nice glass of Cabernet. Doesn't that sound good? That sounds that great. Sounds yeah. See you guys later. <laughs> We're off. <laughs> so let's 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 transition from that. So that was badassery. What are you doing? Tell everybody what you're doing coming up in October. Okay, so this is super exciting. This is totally different for me. So you know I'm usually a motorcycle person yes. or a naked survival person or whatever, the motel owner person or event person. But this year I am doing the Rebel Rally, which is oh. an all-women's off-road navigation challenge. And my teammate is Azure O'Neill, and she and I have been co-workers wow. and friends for years. And we are going to compete in the Rebel for the first time. And it's awesome. It's you know, 50 teams or so, um, and it's all paper, map and compass navigation. It's a full week plus of competition. We cover over a thousand miles in the backcountry in the California and Nevada deserts. And it is really, talk about things that are going to really challenge us. The driving is, I don't want to say, I'm not, I don't want to, um, what do I, how do you say it? Like, I don't want to play down the driving. It's Never probably mind. the easiest part of it. Yeah. Right. The navigation mm -hmm. is what's intense because you're finding these like mysterious waypoints in the middle of nowhere. And mm -hmm. that is a skill that is brand new for us. So, so and talk, you're going to be in a truck together. We'll be in a truck together. That's going to be from a personality thing. It's going to be interesting, right? It's going to be interesting. I do think that the fact that Azure and I have worked together for so many years yeah. and have both ridden our motorcycles long distances, I think we're well prepared to communicate and work through all of those challenges. And we have already been talking about what's it going to be like when things get rough or somebody makes a mistake or something goes wrong. Like, how do we, how do we deal with that between the two of us? Mm -hmm. And so you were talking about the navigation. Yes. I, I, we're big supporters of the rebel rally. Um, 
Talk about the training for the navigation. They're just not just throwing you out there and hoping you know how to navigate. Talk about the training. Because you guys already have been training. Yes, yeah, we started, we did our first rebel training um, early this year, maybe February. And um, the training is awesome. So Rebel, as the rally itself, has Rebel U, which gives you all the tools that you need. Obviously, you don't just go to the class and then you ace the Rebel. But like, you go to the class and it gives you the tools that you need to successfully compete. And so Azure and I, what we're going to do, we're going to try and do really good in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoons, we're going to try to not die in the desert. That's our strategy. <laughs> That's a good strategy. Right? We feel really good about that. Like, if we can do good in the morning and not die in the second half of the day, we're good to go. Like, that's going to be a proper showing for a rookie team. And so where is the Rebel Rally going to be? It, it it starts in Northern California. Very. They don't somewhere. know the route, really. We, we don't know. We won't right, find right, out right, until right, we right. get there. And, the, I mean, they strip it down. Talk about stripping you down to nothing. No watch it. No, yeah, no, no GPS watches. Even your camera, if you've got a GPS locator in your, in your Canon mm -hmm. or something like that, they take that away from you. Pretty much, like, You're it's just. You're tenting it. We're tenting it. Yep, we're driving one of our coworkers' um, 100 Series Land Cruiser, which is gonna be super, super cool. Yeah. It's all kitted out. It's gonna be the perfect truck for this. Um, we're really excited. And we are diving into some heavy duty training the next couple days. So Azure and I will both stay in Oregon and just be out in the backcountry, plotting points, working on the truck, working through some challenges, working, like, learning how to swap tires fast because I hear there's a tire change competition. Mm -hmm. I feel like I might be able to do and I, that. I just yeah, wanna, yeah, I'm thinking you guys are both probably going to be yeah. pretty good at that. I just want to emphasize about the Rebel Rally that it's not like a, a lesser thing oh. or there's ha uh, handicaps given. This or, is like the premier event in that thing. Right. In, period. This is the real <laughs> yeah. deal. Yeah. It is the longest and probably the most comprehensive and intense yeah. rally in North America. Yeah. Like I can't for, think for, of anything. For any gender. Like, and right, then it just, just happens to be all women, which yeah. I think is really cool. It's very you know? absolutely yeah. cool. Yeah. Shout out to Emily. Yeah, Emily Miller, <laughs> she's such a rock star. <laughs> Yep. That whole that whole crew, and I love this too because it's all women competing, yep. but like the support staff is men and women, mm -hmm. which is really fun. You know, everybody's working on the thing together, and it's really you know, I'm not one of those people who's gonna roll in. I'm I'm gonna win. I'm gonna cry. It's I'm not at that level. We just want to do a good job and feel really good about the challenges that we tackled them in a really awesome way. How many teams are there? I want to say there's about 50. Yeah. But okay. I'll report back in October yeah, about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I, I was actually hanging out with some people that did it uh, a couple of years ago yep. at, in uh, on the East Coast a couple of weeks ago when I was at a Land Rover event. So yep. there's, just, there's there's a there's a great community of former competitors out yep. there as well. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And we've been getting so many good tips and feedback from the community. Community. People just like, hey, try this, think about this, like, I like to pack like this, here's how it goes in the morning, it gets a little crazy at this time. So it's been really cool. Everybody's really supportive of each other. And so I love things like that where the competition is primarily internal. You know, it's like, I'm not Nina Barlow. I'm not going to come in and win the thing, right? I don't have any of well, this. Well, hey, you never you know, know. You never know. That's you never right. know. That's right. But really, it, like, if Azure and I can get out there and be really strong in ourselves and how we work together as a teammate, right. that's success right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about stereotypes and overlanding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go, guys. We're going off the rails now. No, not not really. But like a lot of people from the outside looking in, when they when they think of nomads, travelers, overlanders, they immediately think of this ruffian dude. Mm. And being on different sides of this thing, my observation is there's far more single women being nomadic. Uh, on the industry side, there are so many powerful women at all types of levels in this, but the stereotype is the complete opposite of that. Right. Well, <clears throat> that's interesting. And you saying that made me think like Overland Expo was a woman founded and mm. woman owned company yeah. from the very beginning. Yeah. And how yeah. cool is that? Right. Yeah. So we're just in this space that like, you know, what's that quote? It's like strong women, women, may we be them, may we raise them, all that kind of stuff. Like this is that kind of community that really is so supportive of anybody, no matter where you're coming from. If you're a good, kind hearted person and you're coming into this stuff, 
stuff, like ready to learn and hungry for a great experience. The Overland community, the Nomad community, everybody's going to just scoop you up. You will have all the support you need Absolutely. to have whatever adventure you want to have. Yeah, yeah. And I love it. I mean, I love like, it's like we got dude friends, we got girlfriends. It's like, it's just so nice. Like I get, I just feel like we just can come to this space in a really even way. And I, you know, maybe it is like the big tough dude. You know, when I think of Overland stereotypes, it's like, like the soccer mom mobile with like 47 sets of max tracks all over it. Like, and like an eight inch body lift and like yep. they're all the rooftop wrong Rooftop tent, don't forget a rooftop right. tent. In like the Target parking lot. <clears throat> right, right, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. it's just like, you know, but that's really not what it's about. I mean, people come into this space from all walks of life, you know, families with kids, single people, yeah. like people who've been doing it forever, weekend warriors, and there's room for everybody here, which is so cool. Talk about your background, because we just got done talking about the Rebel Rally, which is uh, truck-based. Yep. You are a motorcycle person. Totally. I am a diehard motorcyclist through and through. I mean... Right now, I think I just bought a brand new motorcycle, I KTM, saw it. KTM I saw 690. It. I'm pumped about that. And I just have a whole collection. This year for Overland Expo, I built out a uh, Triumph Tiger 1200 that is gorgeous. If Absolutely you guys haven't seen it, you need beautiful. to check it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's going to be for sale at some point, it'll, right? Yep. Oh. It'll go up for auction at the end of the year on Bring a Trailer. And all of those funds benefit the Overland Expo Foundation, which is super, super cool. So, yeah, I just love motorcycles. I just think it's, you know, I was just talking to somebody the other day. I'm like, it's the ultimate freedom machine. You know what I mean? So... What was what was the origin story to you riding bikes? What, was it already happening in your family? Were there already people riding motorcycles? How, how did you get on a bike? I got a wild hair. <laughs> <laughs> I had 800 bucks in my pocket. I was like 22 or 23 years old. And one of my friend's brothers was selling a 1979 Honda CB750, and I was like, I think I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> and so, I freaking- And then you had to figure out how to ride it. I get dropped off, he was like, I lived kind of in like, the, like I'm from like Western Connecticut, Danbury area, yeah. and then he lived up by the Massachusetts border. So, Noel drops me off at this guy's shop where the yeah. bike is, I give him 800 bucks, he gives me the keys, and like, I somehow managed to not kill myself. <laughs> and like, I think the thing that like kind of inspired me about it, like one, motorcycles are badass. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let's Absolutely. not deny, like, yeah, they're fun. They make you feel bad, whatever. They're badass. badass. Like, they make you feel like a toughie. And I used the thing to commute back and forth between New York and Connecticut. Like that was it. It was cheap. It was inexpensive. It was easy. I had like, back then I was really into primitive skills. So I like made all kinds of weird gear for myself. Mm -hmm. Like I would like did a bunch of felted koozies for like my neck and hands. Cause it was winter in Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. It would snow on me and like terrifying, <laughs> absolutely terrifying riding that thing. I eventually sold it. I sold it for a thousand bucks and I still feel like it's the one that got away. Yeah, like I, yeah, if yeah, I had that yeah. motorcycle, mm -hmm. my God, yeah, I could probably sell it for 20 grand right now. I could buy a brand new GS with it or something. Yeah. So. And for those of you that don't know, like in the Connecticut area, cause I've been stationed out there this summer, the, the, the adventure riding out in Western Connecticut up and down there is amazing. It's amazing. We did some of the BDR uh, last last weekend actually. Uh -huh. And we've been, there are so many dirt tracks and dirt roads totally. in Western Connecticut, Western Mass, yep. border of New York there. Yep. It's awesome. And you don't realize because it's so populous there that you're just like, oh, it's all suburbs and whatnot. There's so much cool stuff there. They just opened a Touratech store in, um, What's that town? Um, Brookfield, Connecticut? Yeah. So, like, there's, like, a real adventure community happening yeah, over there. There is. Cool. Yeah, I see them, yeah. So you started, it was basically used for transportation. Yep, totally. How did you go from that to ever the badass? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I got that first. A lot of motorcycles. A, a lot of motor, a lot of riding, really, is what it was, you know, and, like, just like anybody who's new coming into something, like push yourself a little bit. Don't don't redline when you're trying to like get into something new, right? Push yourself a little bit. Get a little bit out of your comfort zone. Go for a couple days. Go a little bit further. Don't feel like you got to get on the thing and like ride across the country on the tat on day one, right? So like I just started traveling on it, camping on the bike a little bit more. And I always had these vintage Hondas. Like that was my thing. I mm. loved them. And when I went to that first Overland Expo, I had just moved to Flagstaff. And I rolled into that on my, that was a 1978 Honda CX500 that I, at that point, 
had been all over the West. I was living out West by then. Like when I started, I was back on the East Coast in my 20s, but by the time I was in my 30s, I was full-time out West. Mm -hmm. And I had this really cool, I mean, it's a, it's, the Honda CX-500 is like not the world's most glamorous motorcycle, <laughs> but I loved it. You know, it's really, really, it's just a cool bike. It'll last forever. It's shaft driven, V-twin. It's awesome. I rode that thing all over the freaking place um, and showed up at Overland Expo. I had, I had no idea that it wasn't an adventure motorcycle. I had never heard of adventure riding. Mm -hmm. And I show up at Overland Expo and there's all these like guys dressed like Power Rangers, like standing <laughs> up on their GSs. And I was like, what are that, they doing? Is that what I'm supposed to be doing? And like try and stand up and it's so awkward. And I'm like, okay, whatever, this is weird. And so <laughs> that was literally like I had never heard of adventure riding before. Yeah. And so literally, I mean, overlanding like changed the entire trajectory of my life. And that's all I do now. It's yeah. like all what, adventure bikes. Was there a particular uh, experience or first trip that you took that made you say, oh, I want to really take this a lot further? I wouldn't say that there's a particular trip. So in the early days, in my 20s, I rode up to Maine on my CB from right. Connecticut. And that was huge. Like, that was really big. I camped the whole way. I stopped at gas stations. And that was probably my first, quote, long trip. You know, I was gone for a week or something like that. Yep. I, you know, that was like my first long trip on that bike. And that was so cool. And when you're 22, 23 years old, like, being gone for a week, that's a big trip, you know? And I had been across the country a few times in cars at that point, but traveling on a motorcycle is different because, like you guys it's said... A, it's a freedom thing. It's a big... Yeah. You're free, you're open, you're exposed to the world. Like, you tend to take in a lot more on a motorcycle trip, or I do. I do, too. You than see, on a you truck see trip. more. You, you can definitely... Totally. You see more. Yeah. Yeah, but... And now, and you can kind of go more places, honestly. Yes, you have a lot more flexibility. You're also just a lot more at the whim of where you are in the weather. You know, yes. when it's when it's hot, you're hot. When it's cold, you're cold. When it's raining, you're wet, right? Yep. Yep. There's no like, oh, let me just post up for a few days and like drink a cocktail in my van. You, know, you are in it, <laughs> you know? And if you can't be in it, like you're in a tent. Or, right. you know, if things get rough and you need to peel out, you got to get a hotel or find a friend or something like that. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's, what's next for Eva? Man, so next for me is right now I'm in the midst of like a two-month motorcycle trip with all the Overland Expos mixed in. I'm going to go do the Wyoming BDR. So, so, you, so you, just so we're clear, you rode here. I rode here. Yeah, I've been on the road for a month at this point. Um, sorry, plane. It's a private jet hey. coming over. Hey, guys. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have the limo take us over <laughs> in just right. a second. Yeah, yeah. We'll we're, be there. We're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm in the middle of a motorcycle trip right now. I've been on the road for a month. I got about another month before I'm back home in Bisbee. Um, and then Bernie. So Ster Sterling's busy. Sterling's busy. He's, got a whole list He's of getting guys. the honey-do list. Yeah. yeah, I'm hitting him with it on the <laughs> He's not day. doing much motorcycle riding now. Well, he did. He was up here. He and I met up at the Tour Tech rally, so okay. I just saw him a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, he's got so much editing on his plate right now that he's just like chained to the editing station. And we have a ton of motel projects that we're trying to get done during the summer when it's a little bit slower down there. Yeah. Um, and then Burning Man, we go to Burning Man every year. Super fun. We've got a yeah. great crew that we camp with. And then after that, it's going to be right on the heels of the Rebel Rally. So super fun. So Rebel is right after Expo East, right? It is. It is. So cool. I, you won't see me at Overland Expo East. Yeah. Oh. It's just to get that truck staged and ready for that intense competition i won't be there the show is going to be awesome yeah. east is a really cool show it is you know we've got coming up i don't know when you guys will air this but like east is our closing show of the year it's in october it's in a beautiful location it's just really really pretty very family oriented out in the country lovely and then august and last week of august we've got overland expo um mountain, mountain west. west in colorado loveland so you going to be there for that? I'm going to be there, and my truck will be yeah. debuting the new truck at Overland Expo East. Okay. So that's his oh, first man. appearance. Oh, man, you got to send me a sneak preview because yeah, I, I won't know, be there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, cool, you guys. So if people want to follow your journeys, if they want to know more about you, where would, where would they find you? I am pretty easy to find. Eva Rupert on all the things. E-V-A 
R-U-P-E-R-T on Instagram primarily. I'm trying to get better at doing more YouTube stuff, so I'll get working on that once things slow down this winter. Um, I've got my website, and that kind of will keep you up to speed on some of the work that I'm doing and all those kinds of things. Or just come visit us in Bisbee. Stop on by. The Jonquil Motel. The J-O-N-Q-U-I-L Motel. It'll be right here. Perfect. That's See? Right, right there. The Jonquil Motel. <laughs> well, thank you very much for uh, hanging out here at Expo. Beautiful weather. Beautiful awesome weekend. Day. You guys, thank and you so I much. I thank you personally because I know you are a busy person. Ah, uh, well, it's anything for you guys. I'm glad we got to do it. It's been too long. We've been talking about it for too long. So. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Awesome. I'll, all right, guys. You know what I'm going to say. Stay safe, tread lightly, and hopefully I'll see you here or on a trail soon. You have been listening to Waypoint Overland's Random Waypoints. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.